In this fifth and final part of my discussion on trigonometric integrals, I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. I'm going to look at an integral which I know doesn't exist, one which has problems with its denominator being zero. I've chosen the integral here, with a equals 1 and b equals negative 2. In that case, notice that the absolute value of a is less than the absolute value of b. That means there will be some value of cos theta for which the denominator is zero. In fact, that problem happens when cos theta is a half. Between naught and two pi, there are two angles which have that property. One of them is theta equals pi by three. The other is theta equals negative pi by three. Those are the two problem angles. For either of those thetas, the denominator is zero and the integrand blows up. The integral is not defined. I'm going to pretend that I haven't noticed that problem and just plow ahead and do my usual complex transformations and turn the integral into an integral in the complex plane. I want to see what happens and how this problem manifests itself in the complex plane. OK, here we go. We do the usual things let z be e to the j theta so dz is j e to the j theta d theta which is j z d theta and therefore d theta is as usual negative j over z dz also in the usual way, cos theta, using the Euler formula, is a half z plus 1 over z. I've written that down immediately without using the exponential form first. You should be familiar with that by now. As usual, we can put all that together into an integral. So our integral becomes... It'll still be a closed contour integral, still with contour the unit circle. We'll still have our minus j that is always at the front and we'll have our 1 over z dz and then 1 over and what was the function? It was 1 minus 2 cos theta. So that's 1 minus and for 2 cos theta I've got two halves it makes 1 so just 1 minus z plus 1 over z. So far, no problem. Let's expand out the brackets on the bottom. So that's negative j, same integral, 1 over z times 1 is z, minus z times z is z squared, minus z times 1 over z is 1 dz. Still no problem. I don't very much like that negative z squared on the bottom, so let's take the minus that's outside and just this once for a change, bring it inside. Bringing the minus inside will change the sign on the bottom, so the whole thing will become z squared minus z plus 1 dz. What do we do next? Well, remember we have to look for the poles of the function. We need the poles of 1 over z squared minus z plus 1. To find those, we set the denominator equal to 0. Let's write that correctly. So, plus 1 equals 0. I'll head straight for the quadratic formula. z equals 1 plus or minus root 1 minus 4 over 2. Ah, that looks a bit different, doesn't it? We're getting fully complex poles. That's a half plus or minus root negative 3 over 2. So a half plus or minus root 3 over 2j. In all the examples we've done up to now, 
that have worked and given an answer, we've found poles which are along the real axis and away from the circle, mod z equals 1. Take a look at these two poles. In particular, let's look at the modulus. We do the modulus of a half plus root 3 over 2 j, we get root a quarter plus three quarters, that's root of one, which is one. And in exactly the same way, the root of a half minus root three over two j is also root of a quarter plus three quarters, which is also one. That's where the problem lies. These poles actually lie on the contour mod z equals 1. So as we move around that contour and try to integrate, we will encounter the poles directly and we will once again meet infinite values for the integrand as we pass around the contour. Let's actually see that on a diagram. Here's my unit circle and I've got two poles sitting at a half plus root 3 j over 2. That'll be up here. And another one at a half minus root 3 j over 2. The poles are on the contour, so the integrand blows up as it tries to pass through them. Notice also that those are exactly at the angles that we had problems with before. This angle here is pi by 3. Whoops, let's actually write it correctly, shall we? Pi by 3. And similarly, this one here is negative pi by 3. So there's a nice consistency about that. The infinite problems on the real axis from 0 to 2 pi with variable theta translate to infinite problems on the complex contour for z at the positions on the contour where theta has its problem values. That's all very nice and consistent. There's just no sidestepping the problem of infinities. The integral is not defined however you look at it. I'll conclude my presentation there.